Hey, welcome. So today is our Relax with the Health, Wealth, and Happiness meeting, which always puts a smile on my face because who wouldn't want to relax into health, wealth, and happiness? Sounds too good to be true. Uh, is it possible? That's what we want to know. So the uh, dangerous thing, I suppose, about this business of relaxing into health, wealth, and happiness is that you are allowing for mm, you're allowing for a uh, let's say for nature or a higher intelligence to uh, function independently as it is uh, intended rather than with the artificial constraints that have been imposed from a lower level of consciousness. So what this means is that you are, you know, we, to, we say it in simple, in, in, we use simple language, or sometimes we use complex language, whatever the language that's used, it's only pointing, it's not the truth in and of itself. And so sometimes it can seem like there are contradictions, which there are at the level of the language, but you have to hold it all very lightly or don't hold it at all. And so um, we want to see how um, we are working against ourselves, <clears throat> but it's been unconscious. We didn't realize that we were doing it. So this business of relaxing into health, wealth, and happiness is an invitation to allow things to smooth out, uh, so to allow things to align to their natural order so that everything is better. There's nothing that's not better when everything is aligned. But the challenge that we have is that we have a misunderstanding. So we think that we know what we're doing. We think we know what our aim is, but we don't actually, because we have a superficial notion that we accept as a substitute for the real truth. And that uh, is the conditioning that then produces the kind of behavior that reinforces that conditioning. In other words, uh, until you actually are willing to relinquish control adequately, so that, and that means the, the, the control that is effortful, strenuous, uncomfortable, worrisome, anxiety provoking, depressing, frustrating, uh, that unnecessary effort that we're making all the time is a clinging to the false. That, that is a, it's a lower perspective, a perspective of diversity, multiplicity, and uh, unresolvable opposites. And so, of course, at that level, you can't, you're not going to be able to successfully address the problem because the problem exists as a function of that perspective, that lower level perspective. So to relax into health, wealth, and happiness requires that you consciously surrender that unnecessary effort. So we start with the low hanging fruit. That is what's easiest for us to surrender. And of course, the things that are easiest are the things that have some uh, qualities to them that we, some things we can say about them. They are things that are 
present a low level of threat. That is, we don't have too strong of an association. There's obviously an association we have, but not a strong one. Something that we have adequate awareness of to begin with, because we can't stop something until we are aware that we're doing it and how we're doing it. So we have to have adequate awareness. It has to be, uh, as I say, low threat or low, low level of association, low level of identification. In other words, you don't feel uh, that you know, if you're, if you, most people would say, okay, I'm, I, I, I can become aware that I'm clenching my jaw. I can, I can, I'm also aware that clenching my jaw is not helpful to me, does not help me. This is not a useful activity. It's not uh, congruent with my desire. So you, then you have awareness of, of how, of what it is, of how you're doing it. And you say, and I'll, I'll still exist if I don't do that. In fact, I'll be better off. It's unnecessary. It's not me. So then you can voluntarily release it. Now, if the conditioning is fairly strong, then it will come back. You'll go unconscious again, but it, you can then let it go again. So that's low-hanging fruit. Now, once you've found the low-hanging fruit, You've let go of those things. So it's it, it, ultimately they're all thoughts, but they're thoughts that have different flavors to them. So some of them we think are pure abstraction and some of them we think are physical. So whatever may be the case, you can just become aware of those things that you don't need to make the effort to try and manage right now. There's, you know, you're not in a, it's not, this is not a meeting for uh, how to solve the world's economic difficulties. So you can let go of any thoughts about economics. You know, it's not a meeting about how to solve any, any worldly things. You can let go of all the worldly things. You don't need to concern yourself with those things right now. So you wanna give yourself that opportunity, take the opportunity, give yourself that rest. That you, when you can see, here's something that I'm doing it's unnecessary, it's not helpful. No matter how small. No matter how seemingly innocuous. You just be, you, you're aware, you give just adequate enough intelligence to this uh, recognition so that you can then consciously choose by seeing that this is not something that you value, not something that adds value, not something that you want to do. It's not something that gives you a benefit. It's completely unnecessary and thereby, no matter how small it might seemingly be, you have to admit if it's unnecessary and it requires some amount of effort on your part, even if most of the time it's unconscious, that's self-harm if you keep doing it, so stop doing it. Make that choice, make that choice now. It has to be done with clarity and firmness and conviction. And at the same time, with uh, enormous gentleness, because if you start shouting at yourself, even if it's silent shouting, but if you're using violence internally, you're going to, what are you going to get? Violence. <laughs> so here's a big secret that needn't be secret. And so it won't be secret to you any longer. Um, but it's a secret because most people just don't know, which is that your experience is determined by what you, uh, what you do. And what you do is at all levels. So not just what the physical body does, but what you do in terms of where, what you give your attention to, what you entertain, what you imagine, what you believe, what you accept. So 
all of what you do, which includes all of that, that's what determines your experience. It has nothing whatsoever to do with anything so-called outside of you. You just have to look and see the truth of that. Everything in your experience, which is all you know, is exclusively the domain of your experience. It's forever untouched by anything else. That means no circumstance, no uh, uh, sensation, no feeling, no word, no image, nothing that could happen can determine what your experience is other than you. Now, in order, it's a bit of a puzzle because then you say, okay, well, so now it seems like here there's this, there's me and there's my experience. Can you at least, you want to at least see that, that we've reduced it that much. You know, before it seemed like Here's all this multiplicity. Oh my goodness, got to deal with so many things, all these different people, different relationships, so many complexities. Relationship issues, financial issues, health issues, ego issues, so many different issues that have to be managed, so many different things. And here we, in one fell swoop, we reduce that, simplify it to there's well, all we're really going to say for sure is that, th that there's what we call experience and that that's all that we're really talking about. In fact, anything we can talk about is experience. And because it's our, the nature of our language to say it in this way, we say it's your experience, you're, you're, you're experiencing. So we say you're, you're experiencing your experience. We, this is how we say it. Now we'll look to see if it's actually true, but by the very least, to start with, we want to simplify things this much from, from, you know, from infinite diversity and multiplicity to simply experience. And then what's implied, but we haven't, we're going to examine it, but what's implied there by convention is that the, your, it's your experience, you're having the experience. So there's you and there's the experience and there's the experiencing. So this threefold uh, nature of, of the manifest. Okay. So this is what you are, we want to at least we simplify to this much to start. So we can look at this many different ways in order to convince ourselves of this, but you, need, you, need, you do need to become convinced of it. You need to actually look. So it's like if you're, if you're in a hypnotic trance, you're staring at the sky and you're seeing, you know, battle scenes or whatever else you're seeing in the sky because you're hypnotically tranced, then uh, you need to be woken up from that trance. You need to be stirred from your hypnosis. So um, how does that occur? Ultimately, it has to occur from within yourself. You're the only one who can do this essential task. Now you can forever put it off and imagine that this has to happen by some other means. Somebody else has to do it. God has to do it. You can imagine whatever you want, but it, that will go on forever until which time you do it for yourself. You have to wake up. So you want to be active in the looking. Don't take, an, don't take an entirely passive role. You have to be active in the sense that you're actively looking. Don't look in a passive way because if you look in a passive way, you'll go back to sleep. You have to look in an active way, but in looking actively, notice 
that you're now penetrating deeper it with your inquiry. You have to be looking actively. And what this does is it it's like the light is shining more intensely so that the, the darkness fades more rapidly. So you, you're looking very actively at your direct experience and you're observing that all that you are aware of in at least anything that you can objectively uh, describe, so any, anything, any experience of any kind is exclusively the domain of your experience. It's not produced by something outside. The, all that you can actually know that you can say anything about is your experience. You think that your experience is about something outside of you, right? You think that you're interfacing with something and that's what the experience is, that there's you and the world and that world consists of all of these objects and you're interfacing with those. And that's, you think that that's what your experience is composed of, is that you're just sensing something that's there objectively. But what I'm inviting you to see is that in actuality, in your direct experience, you have no proof whatsoever, nothing even hinting that uh, what you think is true is true. And instead, what you find, if you look sincerely, is that all that there is, is what we can call your experience. So you think that you're, you, you say, I'm going to eat a watermelon. Now, I know none of you would eat a watermelon, but you can just pretend with me. You say, I'm going to eat a watermelon. And you think, okay, here, there's, I've, now I see the watermelon. That's the watermelon over there. I'm, I'm seeing the, the watermelon that exists there that has independent existence. And I am merely seeing it, but it exists out there. And then you say, and I'm gonna further prove that that watermelon is really out there by slicing into it. And then I'm gonna take a bite and I'm gonna taste it. And I'm gonna feel the sensation that I, my, my mind tells me means that I'm eating a watermelon. A sense of coolness, a sense of juiciness, a sense of a bit of crunch. If you've never had a watermelon, then I guess you won't know what I'm talking about. It might be a peculiar American thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so, you, but you think, okay, there's a watermelon out there and I'm having this experience of it. But take a closer look and you see actually all that's happening is the experience. You don't know anything about any watermelon. You just have thoughts about a watermelon. And so that's what I'm inviting you to hear. First step is just to see that all I'm dealing with is what I think of as my own experience. So we wanna simplify, it's really, really important to simplify this much because otherwise you see what happens is your attention is endlessly stuck on all of the things, the content that arise within the dream, because you'll, you'll always be putting out fires metaphorically. There'll always be another thing, another thing that you either perceive that you're lacking or a thing that you perceive that you need to get rid of. Usually multiple of each, all going on simultaneously. You know, need more money, more of the right people, less of the wrong, got to get rid of the wrong people, you know, always got to, always going on, constant. And the mistake that we make is we think somehow I'm going to get out ahead. I'm, I got to deal with all this stuff. I got to keep putting out these fires and I'm just going to get ahead enough that I'll be able to then figure out the rest of it but notice that that never works there's an intro there's a story from now as usual uh caveat is i i do tend to ruin the stories and I, this will be no exception um because i already know that i have no idea all the details are going to be missing from this story um but it, it's um 
Mm. Oh, she see this. I can't even, I don't even know what this is from. Anyway, this is a story. <laughs> I was going to say it's from the Mahabharata, but I don't, I don't know that that's true. Um, uh, maybe, in, 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 anyway, um, the story, the story is relevant is that um, there was uh, there, there was a king and this, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but there's a king who has uh, 60, like 60,000 sons, an enormous number of sons, some insane number. And I'm sure that the number, exact number is very significant and I've given the wrong number. So forgive me on that, but we'll say 60,000. Could be 16,000, could be a million, but a lot of sons. And uh, he's going to, he, he's, He's doing a um, this particular ritual that involves they send out a horse. He wants to be king, the king of kings, basically. So he's going to send out a horse. He's going to roam to all these other uh, adjacent kingdoms. And the deal is, if the in if the horse can pass through the other kingdoms, then uh, this is a message, basically, from those other kings that they are surrendering to this king who sent out the horse. And if they prevent the horse from, if they obstruct the horse, then it's a declaration of war. So he's done this. And then what happens is uh, this horse, some, somehow something happens and this horse gets caught up in a, um, with, with some, some hermits who are very advanced yogis. And uh, so he sends he sends the uh, he sends the majority of his sons to go retrieve it, and they just march in there, you know, arrogant, and uh, and they they disrupt the they disrupt the the yogi. So from his meditation, so in a flash, <laughs> you know, they've. <laughs> In a flash, he burns them to ashes, incinerates them with his yogic powers. And uh, the the so then this son is the remaining son is sent to go sort this out. And um, and here I'm, I'll butcher the story further because I don't I remember even fewer of the details of this from from this point forward. Um, but this story goes basically some I think he he is. He, he's going to resolve this, but in order to resolve it, he has to have this direct experience, basically. He has, he's being pushed to, uh, in the direction of enlightenment. But he says, no, but I've got to first, I've got to fulfill all my, you know, his father dies. He's got to go back. He's got to be the king now. So he's got to fulfill my, all my worldly duties here. You know, I've got to be the king. And when I'm done with that, then I'll retire to the forest and I'll meditate. And then I'm, you know, then it will happen. Well, so he does that then, but he, it's too late for him. It doesn't work out. And his son does the same thing. I'll, I, I've got to be the king. I got to deal with all this stuff. And then when I'm, when I can retire, then I'll be a hermit in the forest. And we'll see, this goes on and on and on. And no, nothing, nothing ever changes. It's the same thing until finally in this story, there's one, who realizes very early on, he says, look, I see the pattern. I see what's been going on. And I know that there's a, I know that there's a fear here that, that could continue the same pattern if I indulge it. Of course, I'm reluctant to uh, go to, to leave my worldly duties, the same as my, my, my forefathers. But I see that this is, you know, there's still this, this unresolved legacy you know still this uh tragedy that has not been resolved so i have to do something different i can't just follow the same path and so he says no, I'm, I'm retiring immediately <laughs> you know before before i get roped into any of it i'm retiring and i'm going to go to the forest and meditate until this all becomes clear to me and so this is the this is the resolution so we uh, we want to be we want to help ourselves not make that mistake that 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 is so often the mistake that's made, which is that we don't have that 
um, we don't we don't flip that urgency that we experience in a negative way on its head so that it can be in service of what is true. See, most of the time we're so quick to give in to the pressure, the sense of urgency that we can't bear the discomfort. You know, it's so awful. We can't bear it even for another second. And we have, so we're dealing with that all the time believing that that's true. And then when it comes to um, relaxing into health, wealth, and happiness, that is to say, to really get clear on who you are, what is truly possible, the depth of, of uh, peace that is truly your birthright that you don't need to go doing anything for, but that is absolutely yours already, this is, um, you know, this is the only, the only sensible thing, really, when you get clear on it, is you have to, you have to apply yourself to the truth. And that's why I'm saying that don't, you don't want it to be a passive looking, it should be an active looking, one in which you are alert, one in which you are telling the truth, one in which you do not allow yourself to be persuaded or seduced by the uh, the lies that maintain the status quo that you're totally dissatisfied with. So the seeing is active, and when and as you are seeing in this active way, there's a you're actively passive. Okay, so the seeing is active, and then you're actively choosing. For every to be passive to everything else, so that your own your entire attention is with seeing only. So you'll notice that as you uh, now, first of all, that depending on various factors, that suggestion right there that was just given could be a, a very powerful suggestion. So it, that's a, certainly a, a possibility. Depends on, in a sense, your maturity of, of uh, what well, your maturity in this regard, in regard to self-knowledge. You know, that you, you, you have to be, mature enough that you can see that th there's nothing in it for you any longer to continue the self-deception. There's, n and there never was anything in it for you, but you definitely can see that there is nothing in it for you now, that there's nothing that you're gonna gain by continuing any of the lies that you tell yourself and other people. And so that kind of maturity will then give rise to the uh, willingness to really see in this active way and to then actively be passive in every other way. That is, as you're, you're seeing in this active way, you, you are, uh, you'll, observe that all of everything that's occurring, which is, of course, we say that's in your experience, right? Because we've already covered that, that everything that's occurring is occurring in your experience. And this is the way we speak of it, at least. It's in your experience. It's not outside of your experience. You can't have any experience outside of your experience. All of your experience is subjective. There's nothing objective about your experience because you don't have any objects. You have only pure subjectivity. You don't know anything outside of yourself. You couldn't possibly know anything outside of yourself. So uh, when you are seeing in this active way, recognizing that it's all your experience, then notice what a difference that is from the normal way, the normal way, which is to perceive that you're the separate thing 
living in an objective world, interacting with all of these external things. So when you when you perceive it in that way, which is self deception, because there's no proof of that, it's just a fantasy, one that's that you have you're in the habit of believing is true. But other than that, it's not is is not true. <laughs> so um, to, to reduce or simplify it in this way is enormous. But you have you can't skip over it artificially. You have to really look so that you can see it clearly. So you want to see that the normal way of perceiving has no pr there's no proof that it's true. It's just an assumption. That's it. You just have an assumption that you are this, you are a separate person who exists as an object in an objective universe amid other objects and that you interact with that objective universe and that your experience is a product of that interaction with the objective universe. That is to say that your experience is determined by the objective universe some other you thereby you are a victim by definition and you don't like that you're unhappy with that so then you want to start to see is it true well no there's no proof whatsoever that it's true there's only a habit of believing that it's so you see you want to see that all of your problems depend upon that Every single one of your problems is based on that fundamental assumption. Every single one of them. There cannot be any exception to that. Every single problem. Even if you say, well, but it's a metaphysical problem. You can't have a metaphysical problem independent of, the, of your belief that you exist as something objectively separate, even if that thing is very subtle. Even if you say, well, I, I know I'm not a body, I'm a, I'm a soul. Okay, but if that soul is something separate, then it's just a subtle object. So however you conceive of yourself, that conception is an object because all, all objects are is thought. Thought and object are synonyms. They're the same thing. So you have um, this, this possibility of an enormous simplification, really, really, really important because all of your problems, again, I'm saying this again, but it's all of your problems exist only within that fantasy that is the um, blossoming of a, a seed that is a, a seed of separation. It's a thought only. It's just a fantasy that there is a separation. And then you say, based on that assumption, then I, I'm interpreting everything that's happening from that, with that lens of separation. So of course I'm a separate thing amid other separate things in an objective universe. And if that is true, then all of these other problems are likely valid. And so there you have this enormous burden that you carry around all based on that assumption and the wisdom of, of, of uh, of those like Ramana Maharshi is to point out that, okay, you can do all these other things, it's fine, but ultimately none of them will give you what you want. The only thing that can give you what you want is you have is to give everything to what you want. You have to see, first of all, you have to get clear on what you want. It, because that that's required. Most people don't, they don't have that clarity. So they can, what happens is you say, well, I, I, I've been to these meetings a bit. I thought about it a little bit. I've read some things. I think it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I guess 
I guess, you know, eternal, uh, eternal, unconditional peace. That sounds like a good thing. Yeah, I guess that's, that's sensible. That's what I want. And so say, so, okay, great. Here you go. Here's how you can do that. You just give your full attention to that very same unconditional peace presently, right now. You just give your attention to that. And, and then depending on the mature, the level of maturity, the person will either say, well, I, I, I don't even know how to do that. I can't even, that, you're not giving me good, of, good enough instruction. I have to, you know, no, I don't even know where to begin with that. Or they'll say, uh, oh, I don't really know how to do that. And that didn't work. Or they'll give it a shot and they'll have, they'll, they'll take it to heart. They'll really look at it sincerely. They'll have some various experiences that will help them in their sincere uh, desire to have greater skill in self-inquiry. And thereby, thereby they will improve in that skill and it will become easier and clearer for them. But uh, ultimately, all that it's really pointing to is just that all of all of the problems exist in a fantasy and that it's possible to simply look and notice that that fantasy was mistaken for some kind of thing independent of the self, independent of who I know myself to be. And then I projected myself into it as this character, limited character. So then I fulfilled my desire to imagine myself as an object in an objective universe, but then it turns out I'm not really, don't really like that. So I, I need some self-correction. That's what self-inquiry offers, but you have to, you have to keep looking sincerely and then see over and over and over until it just gets so clear. Cause you'll think you understand it. Well, first you'll think you don't understand it. Then you'll think you understand it. If you, if you cling to the notion that you understand it, you'll stay stuck. You have to let go of the idea that you understand it and then continue to approach it as a, with the innocence of a child. And then you really come to know it, but never landing somewhere saying that you know it because it becomes clear that it's a living reality. It's a, it's a present living reality it's not something to be attained in the future it's not something that can be had by somebody and this is um so this again the seeing is active but then what happens is as this as the seeing as you're seeing in this active way there's a refinement uh, of this of the scene and that is we see with greater subtlety, ref greater refinement of perception. And so we're, we're observing then from, we, this is, these are just words to describe it, don't take it too literally, but we can say we're, we're then observing at higher levels of consciousness which allows us, because, because we're observing at a higher level, where the, uh, the limitations of the lower level do not exist. The, the limitations of the lower level are resolved into the higher level. So when we, when we see from that level, then we can simply allow for those old habits of uh, identifying at that lower level, which is characterized by increased fear, anxiety, distress, and so forth. So we wanna see how we have those habits. This is what we're watching actively, seeing actively, all of these things that we're now able to see with a, a greater degree of clarity because we're seeing it from a higher level of consciousness, but we're not 
in the, we're not all in the clear yet. We have to, because what happens for people is they'll, they'll say, okay, I, I think I get it. I understand. Okay. I'll, I'll let go. I'll, I'll, you know, not be chomping at the bit to get hold of every single thought that passes through and take that too seriously right off the bat and make it all personal. I can chill out for a moment because that's the instruction that's given. And so say, okay, I can do that. But, and then they say, oh, but it doesn't work. Oh, I just feel more, more uncomfortable. I just feel more intensity. What? I thought this was just help me feel better. It's not working. It's just a misunderstanding. It's, it's working perfectly. It's working exactly as it should. You're the, the it's reliable in that sense. It's it just these. We're just talking about the how nature functions. When you cease to rush headlong into the old habit, when you pause, when you slow down, when you reflect, when you are uh, seeing things, choosing consciously to see things without the unnecessary personal filters when you consciously remove the labels, when you consciously see beyond the associations and the tendencies, then all of that, that is uh, practicing peace. So what's gonna happen? Everything that needs to have peace brought to it is gonna present itself. It's like a, finally a breath of fresh air. You know, here's been this warfare, this internal warfare for goodness knows how long. It's been a long time, hasn't it? For as long as you can remember. And here, finally, this intelligence is dawned and it's shining the light of peace. And of course, everything is going to start rushing toward it and saying, oh, thank you so much for being here, peace. We've been looking for you, needing you so much. And what happens is that that's, the peace is a higher level of consciousness. You have to stay at that higher level of consciousness rather than freaking out. You jump back down to the lower level of consciousness. You start entertaining the thoughts that say, oh, this is all bad. I'm being harmed. This is, I'm unsafe. All of the usual kinds of habitual thought patterns, you start believing those are true and you find yourself panicking. And then you say, oh, it doesn't work. But again, it worked perfectly. You just didn't work it. <laughs> you know, like you worked it halfway and then you got spooked. So you want, you got to, you got to see it through all the way. You know, you got to stay at the higher level. Don't allow yourself to be sucked back to a lower level because of some bullying thoughts, some kind of negative, fearful thoughts, because of some uh, fearful fantasy that is projected on the screen of the mind. Don't, don't allow any of that to bully you just because some sensation is occurring that you don't fully understand. Don't. Don't succumb to the old way, which you know is unsatisfying. Don't do that. You see, you have to see it clearly. Now, obviously, I say I say this, but maybe it's not obvious. So, but obvious to me, and hopefully now to you, that you don't. There, there's a fine line. There's a balance because along the way that. It all everything that's unresolved, everything that's unhealed, everything that's festering, everything that's wounded, everything that's traumatized, everything that is uh, from at, at a lower frequency, everything that is of ignorance, everything that is of pain, all of that uh, is coming to be resolved. So by the higher level of consciousness. When you allow it to be resolved by the higher level of consciousness, which is 
it's a natural function, so it just happens. You don't have to force anything, but when that happens, then you no longer have to needlessly struggle with those unresolved conflicts because they're resolved. That's, that's the power of the higher level of consciousness, but you have to see it through all the way. Because if you begin the process and then you're seeing in this active way, but you don't also actively choose to be passive in every other way, then you'll freak out and you'll justify it. You'll justify your action. You'll say, I had to. I had to do it. It's too much. It's too scary. I was going to die. And so there's, there's a fine line, though, because you, you don't want to try to be, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew at the same time. So you want to be gentle. But at the same time, you have to be clear, resolved, firm, anchored in the, in the direct knowing. See, there's something when you, when, even just for an instant, when you choose to relax deeply, when you choose to let go, when you choose not to grasp anything, and, and, and so much so that you don't even worry about the thought that says, I'm not sure that I can succeed. You know, you don't even worry about any of that. You don't worry about any of it. When you choose in an active way presently to just to remain deeply relaxed, unmoving, unmovable, you're, you know, you're like space. You can't be moved. There's nothing that can move you. You have to have that kind of clarity and that kind of resolve that you can access that space. Yourself is space. You have to know yourself in this way. And it's, it gets clearer and clearer because you see every time that you know yourself as space that is unmovable, unshakable, no matter what arises, you know yourself as a space. You, a you access that directly. Do that now. Just notice that now. It, you don't have to create it. You don't create the space. You notice the space. When everything else is let go, what remains is that which is not a thing. It can't be moved. It can't be grasped. It can't be uh, augmented. It cannot be diminished. It cannot be harmed. This is enormously powerful. This is the, 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 this is the realization is that I am this. I, I didn't become this. I always am this. And this is not something that would, has ever been created. It's not something that will be destroyed. It's not something that depends upon anything. It doesn't depend on body, mind, thought, relationship, money. None of it doesn't depend on any of that. So you have to give yourself that permission to sink into that, to notice that, to allow that presently right now. And then you see it's a game. You just continue to allow that. And then you'll notice that in that there's things arising and you, you keep relaxing deeply. If you keep relaxing deeply, if you continue to be very present, it actually takes care of itself. If you remain completely present, nothing can, nothing, you can't get, uh, it won't get to a point where it's scary or uncomfortable. The problem is only when you lose consciousness, which is what, by what I mean by that is, you don't, you obviously can't lose consciousness per se, but you, you lose the focus. Your focus goes to something else. You start daydreaming. You start thinking about different things. You start worrying about various experiences that you're imagining that you're either having or having or might have. And then the next thing you know, you'll when you're 
brought sh shaken out of your trance is you'll find that you're uncomfortable but it's the, the discomfort is because you didn't you, you don't know what you've just done because you went unconscious so but if you remain completely conscious the entire time no no nothing uncomfortable can happen because you you know who you are continuously you know that you are that unmovable unshakable peace so the when we the 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 other big mistake uh, a million big mistakes but here's another mistake is to keep coming back and thinking i'm doing this i'm getting this every time you do that you ruin it because you're saying I want, what, when you say you want freedom, because you want freedom, what you really want freedom from is what you think of as yourself. Nobody else is giving you a hard time. It's only you. Right? I mean, it's only, that again, this comes back to the power of directly recognizing that there's nothing that you know of or have access to that you can say anything about other than your experience. And so your experience is completely subjective. There's no, as far as you know, there is nothing outside of your experience. So you're, there's no distance, there's no delay of any kind, there's nothing, there's only the experience. And when you see that in its uh, depths, then you'll, really understand something remarkable because as i just as i just said when you when you recognize that that's so then what that you realize there's nothing that can harm you but you're and, and, and nothing that can victimize you nothing that can you are um, completely 100% responsible and you have everything that you need in order to take that responsibility with ease. So it doesn't have to be this unpleasant thing. But along the way, you have a lot of, a lot of, uh, habits, most of which are, well, by definition, they're unconscious. So you have a lot of unconscious habits and your tendency is to get spooked by them, to believe the scary thoughts that co-arise with the other phenomena that make up that thing that you call the experience. So whatever that's composed of feelings, sensations, memories, etc. But it's the uh, the thought that says this is this is mine. This is me. This matters. I have to. I'm in trouble. So that then, when you believe that, then you're then you are in trouble. But here, the invitation, which is truly a radical one, is simply relax into health, wealth, and happiness and to see how powerful that is. That there's no, it's not something, it's not like do this and then I'll give you level two. This is, you do this and this is it. This is practicing peace. This is practicing self knowledge. And it gives everything. So I encourage you to really 
reflect over the weekend as often as possible on this uh, pointing that your experience is all that you So as you're going through, you know, whatever is happening, whatever, if you're interacting with somebody or you're watching TV or you're reading something or you're walking or you're shopping or whatever you're doing, brushing your teeth, you can be aware of what it is that you're believing. And whether that is congruent with what you want, because if it's not, then guess what? You probably don't want to keep doing that. Now that seems like, I know it seems like not, not actionable or too simple or too stupid or too obvious or I don't know what, but it's none of those things is perfectly actionable. Uh, you have to simply be aware, just be alert. And so you, you want to start to allow every discomfort to be the thing that reminds you to inquire in this way. So every time you feel discomfort, just simply Pause and notice, what am I believing right now? What are the thoughts that I'm accepting as a truthful narrative? Because they're not true. And you want to see that you really do. It's you just pause, you observe that. You have to know every time that you're experiencing distress, you're believing something that's not true. And so if you pause and you observe, then you'll see, oh yeah, there it is. I'm believing that. And now you don't need to analyze it, you don't need to you know, do like a, a worksheet on it and or anything like that. You just want to see it, see that it's not true, and then see that you have the ability to just let it go. And that doesn't mean it will instantly go away. It might, but it might linger and it might continue to uh, appear in your consciousness. And just if that occurs, that just means you have not yet gotten adequate clarity about it. So you just keep looking in this way. You, and you see, you look in this active way, and then you actively are passive in every other way. So you're seeing the you're seeing, okay, here's this, here's this belief. Here's I, you know, I believe that this feeling is a bad feeling. And I believe this bad feeling is, is the result of something that has happened. And I believe that it's probably related to this other person. I think probably they're to blame. And uh, so now I'm, I should be, the solution is I should just be upset with them. This is the kind of thing that's going on most of the time. And then your energy is sucked up into these things that you don't want. So you get you're in you're energizing all of these things that you don't want but that's your it's your experience you have complete control there you are the sole authority uh which you've abdicated but you can reclaim so you have to observe you see these things as they're coming up and then you see the, the second part of it is that you have to then be actively passive in everything else which means that the, the impulses and compulsions that arise, don't you don't do them. You have to be actively passive. You, you're not going to allow yourself to be taken over by some kind of hostile spirit. 
You think about that. You know, something that takes over your body, takes over your mind, takes over your tongue to act out behaviors that are not in alignment with what you truly want. Don't you, you don't allow that. Don't do that. You are in charge. You are the only authority, the sole authority. And so you stop playing the game of victimization. Stop playing the, oh, I'm, I guess that's just how it is, is I'm taken over by hostile spirits frequently, <laughs> you know, throughout the day, my entire body taken over. I go unconscious and this thing takes over, this habit. So don't just simply see that and say, no, that's insane. I won't do that anymore. That, that's not how it works. I was wrong. I was mistaken. I can be aware when it happens. I'm aware that that's going on. I'm aware that that's the belief. I'm aware that it's not true. I'm aware of these energetic impulses and I'm aware that I don't have to indulge them. I can relax more deeply. And every time that I do, I'm going to be liberating more of that energy that was previously bound in habits that I didn't want. What do you think I'm going to feel? I'm going to feel more energy. What do you think my brain is going to tell me about that energy? It's going to tell me, wait a second, I don't know if I like this. This seems a little scary. It seems a little uncomfortable. Maybe I'm dying. So this is why you have to remain actively passive in everything else. Because if you try to just be passively passive in everything else, you'll go unconscious. You'll start flailing like an unconscious autonomous, uh, 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 automaton, the, the same as you're otherwise doing most of the time. And then you get yourself in more trouble. So you want to remain conscious, relaxed, deeply. And then when the thoughts that come up, as they will, that try to persuade you why something else is more important, why you shouldn't be relaxing, why you should be freaking out, why you should be taking some kind of pointless, insane action, you have to be clear enough to be able to see it. You know, you just have to see all of the things that have, been driving the show they've been absolutely running your life and their unconscious habits and beliefs that when you remain actively passive in this way meaning you're deeply restfully observing and able to see that's not true that's not what i want i'm not that's not me I'm not going to allow that hostile spirit to take me over. I'm just going to remain calm and relaxed and as, as like, like space and allow whatever comes and goes to pass through just as anything would come and pass through space. I do not consent to being taken over by hostile spirits. And you just remain calm, restful, relaxed, observant, and don't let yourself be uh, persuaded by all of the drama that, that appears in consciousness. You just remain calm, knowing that what you're doing is very important, very good, very, very loving, most important work. It's much more important to be consciously restful, consciously passive than anything else. Think about that, because anything else that you're doing there, thereby is unconscious and cannot produce good results. To, to remain consciously passive means that you're allowing truth to shine unimpededly. This is where all, all goodness comes from, the source of all healing, the source of all true knowledge. It's not, it's not at a distance. It's not something that's going to come in the future. It's here now, and you, you simply rest in it. You relax deeply into it. You allow your own true nature to naturally be revealed. That's completely possible for you. There's no prerequisite other than the maturity, which is 
interestingly, you know, as long if, if you're here, which you are, obviously, then that enough, that's enough that qualifies you actually, because you have, an, you have the desire, the desire is there. So all you have to do then is make that desire active and point it in the right direction so that you're completely active towards seeing and let, and then active toward being passive in every other way. So whatever, whatever stressful thoughts arise, you have to be totally passive. You have to be active in the sense that you're seeing, but actively passive in the sense that you don't react to any of it because you're, you're, all your energy is going, all of your activity is going to seeing and relaxing. And so then you have to be passive in every other regard so that you're not reacting, becoming involved in the drama because if you get involved in the drama it's a drama of your own creation and it's a drama that you don't want so don't do it it's remarkably simple and uh and i get it it's the most challenging thing but you're in the you're in the right place you're in you have you have access to the right knowledge So it's a very, you're very fortunate. It's a very, it's a very um, uncommon thing, apparently, to have access to that kind of direct knowledge. I mean, it's, op it's, it's open, anybody could have access to it, but very few do, very few take that opportunity, very few know about the opportunity. So the fact that you know about the opportunity you've taken the opportunity it means that you have all the pre prerequisites now all that's required is you just take take this action it be active in the seeing don't let yourself go back to sleep don't believe the thought that says that it's inevitable don't believe the thought that says oh but you know you will go back to sleep Instead, when you're actively seeing, you're, you're seeing every thought as a thought. This requires no effort at all. It's the most relaxing, most effortless thing because it's the very nature of consciousness to simply be conscious. So you're just conscious. You just, you are only yourself. And then you observe to see everything else that comes and goes everything that moves and know that I am the space in which all of this is appearing and disappearing. So then you are giving, this is the most direct thing you again, coming back to, and I'll wrap it up with this, just a reminder that what I'm encouraging you to observe repeatedly as often as possible over the weekend is to see that all of this is your experience only that you don't know of anything outside of your experience. And so you're going, you just want to see that you spend 99% of your time going round and round in thoughts that have no fundamental basis. And that you have another option, which is to rest deeply and to remain actively seeing and then to be actively passive in every other regard to relax increasingly deeply and to see even how the, th the thoughts that will come that say, but then, I, but then I'll just be like a rock, then I won't do anything, then my family will leave me, then nobody will be my friend, then I'll, my body will die and so forth and so on. You have to see that those are just more thoughts that are not true. You're playing a game now, you wanna see, I, your game is, I, I have glimpsed the truth. I want to see the truth with, um, with ever increasing clarity, which means that I no longer accept superficial notions as substitutes for the real truth. I know that the truth is, the real truth is a living reality, an intimate, timeless reality 
and that these are have been pointed, given all of these pointers to, to discover it, have been shown all of these different ways to, in which to look. It's been pointed out to me all of these different ways. And my job now is really just to relax deeply and see, to see what it is that's being pointed to, to see, and, and in order to see that, the, the suggestion is relax deeply and don't, don't, don't um, allow for any thought to be the, the catalyst of any kind of agitation. Your job is to remain as close to your true nature as possible in that profound relaxation, stillness, like space, so that nothing can harm you, nothing can touch you. You can't fake it, you have to sink into it, you have to allow it, you have to allow everything to move through and then you're just actively watching and you'll see, oh, there's how I get caught. There's how I, there's what I believe that's not true. There's how I have perpetuated this habit. And you just, you don't try to fix it. You don't try to, you don't have to analyze it. You don't have to do a worksheet on it. You just simply continue to observe, just seeing actively and relaxing deeply. And you'll see it. it's, a, it, it's magic. So I, if, with that said, I hope you have a magical weekend of very wonderful inquiry. I hope that uh, experience the truth of your, of your nature is peace, is unconditional peace, and that you can rest increasingly deeply in that realization. And I will see you next time. So have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. Blessings to you all.